Hi, I'm in my studio today and I thought I'd share with you my little plein air watercolor kit. I have spoke to some of you um, in person about being able to plein air paint out of a cigar box size art box and I'll be showing you today exactly what I mean by that. Um, first, let me show you. There's no need for any fancy equipment. This is actually a very beat up old cigar box I pulled out of my dad's workshop and reinforced, as you can see, with very expensive duct tape and masking tape. I've got a few office bull clips, small size on the sides of them so that it can open up. And with a little addition of a piece of ribbon from here, let me see if I can do this, from here, up here, if you tape a piece of ribbon from here to here, it actually will hold up the back of the cigar box like a little easel. So where I have this black piece of paper is where I normally clip my watercolor paper. It'll accommodate a five by seven, four by six, or what I keep in my little kit all the time is a little pad of Canson four by eight, 140 pound postcard paper. It's watercolor paper. Not the best paper in the world, but it is in a block format, which is very convenient. It won't curl or ripple. And then you can just take off what you finished and set it aside, because we all know if you're plein air painting, things dry very quickly. Okay, now for the rest of the goodies inside my plein air watercolor kit. I have a mini box of paints and it's a very limited palette. I'm trying to get it open for you. This is called Aqua Mini by Sennelier. They're a honey-based watercolor. I'm trying to get it open for you. For some reason, I'm struggling here. There we go. Show you the colors inside. It's well used. There's only eight colors, two blues, a red, a yellow, two greens, a brown, and a, I believe it's a black. I don't use the black very much though. Um, a little cleanup. This is your mixing tray for your colors. So you kind of, for the, my kit, I do a lot of wet and wet painting. So I actually mix on the paper. So this is one of the watercolor sets I use when I'm outdoors. The second set that I keep in the box is I believe by Windsor Newton. It's either Windsor Newton or Cotman. It has a few more colors in it. These tend to be, I bought this one at Michael's, a little um, kit. It has more mixing wells in it, and it even comes with a very tiny paintbrush, but the paintbrush was really poor quality. I was very disappointed in it. What's nice about these though, is it does have, uh, have a white, which you can use for touching up if you mess up and drop out your whites a little bit. It's not the same as a gouache, but it can work in a pinch when you're out in the field. So that's my second watercolor actual pigment. I do take a small tube of white gouache. This is type, no, primary white it's called, and it's from Holbein. Um, you can use any kind of gouache though if you need to add some of the whites back to your area. If you're a purist, you don't use gouache at all. So that's up to you. The other tool I keep in my tool kit is a little retractable, let me see if I can get to show you this, little break off, snap off um, X-Acto knife. And this has a couple purposes. It does come with a little safety blade, but the reason for that is it. I use it to cut apart, oh, sorry about that, release my watercolor paper from the block. I can slide it in to the separation and cut through, remove it. The other thing it's also good for is for, as you know, or you may not know, uh, scraping out tiny highlights of white if they happen to have gotten lost in your paper. So an X-Acto knife is very useful. Uh, basically, all I need when I'm outside painting, and you're gonna probably be surprised, is three paint brushes. This one came from Michaels. It's a flat, a one inch flat brush it's um, Royal Langnickel, and it's a three-quarter inch. I'm sorry, I thought I said one inch, but this is a three-quarter inch brush. Very inexpensive. I think it was like $2.50. So at home in my studio, I usually have uh, 
three of these, one for yellow, one for red, one for blue, so I don't get any pigment mixing and I don't have to worry too much about it. But basically, in a pinch, this will apply my first water to my paper or um, the other tool I use is a little spray bottle. These you can get at Dollar Tree or some other dollar store. Um, they're very inexpensive and very convenient for either wetting your paper it, before you start to paint or as you're working for some nice uh, textural effects. So here's my one paintbrush that's a must have with me when I'm out in the field. The other I take with me is this. Basically, it's a 12 inch round. I love this brush. It's made by Escoda. It's a Perla, but any brush, size 12, size 10, uh, for the size I'm working in the, in the field will be excellent. Just make sure you get it so that it holds a nice tip because if it holds a point, when, when you're painting, this a good quality brush will be able to go anything from a fine line to a wide brush stroke. And my last brush that I like to take, and it's really not a necessity, but it's my one of my favorite fun uh, brushes to add a little bit of pizzazz to my painting, is a liner brush. This one is a low Cornell, and I believe it's a it's called a script brush, and it's a size three. But basically, anything with a long set of brushes that comes to a very fine tip, you can use this for detailing in landscapes or in the um, trees, flowers, almost any kind of detail work. It's great. It gives you a real nice, playful calligraphic line if you hold it from the edge or from the back end of it, and you can use it to sign when you're done with your work. Okay, so basically three brushes is what I always have with me. Now, I'm telling you just about my basic cigar box kit. So I do break off a piece of my magic eraser and throw that into the little box just in case I need to really take something away. Usually not, it isn't used that much when I'm out plain, plain air painting because um, everything is just too quick, but I carry it with me as sort of my just in case tool. Pencil, and then I have a Derwent Ink Tense White Pencil. This is a water, Ink Tense is a, a really good uh, pigmented pencil that you can actually uh, use, you, you, you can draw it in where your whites are missing and use your water brush, just a water filled brush to go over and add some of your whites back. That's an emergency tool, but I do keep it in there. The last, an eraser, and this is a sand eraser, or what we used to call a ballpoint pen eraser in my day, uh, and it can be used to lift out dried uh, watercolor pigment to bring back some of the whites if you need it. So that's, again, a sand eraser it's called. Uh, Tombow, I believe, is who makes this brand, but if you can find any brand, the old-fashioned kind used to have a regular pencil eraser on one side, a pink side, and then the sand eraser on the opposite side, but they're a little harder to find. Lastly, no, I guess not lastly, almost lastly, I fold up several sheets of watercolor, I'm sorry, not watercolor, paper towels, and I tuck those into my box because I use them as to control the amount of water in my paintbrush, uh, also to dab out any clouds that I'm, I'm working on in a landscape. I use a Micron pen in my box. It's a very fine tip, almost like a mechanical pen. And I just keep that in there for if, if it's not, if my piece isn't working as just plain watercolor and I think it needs a little bit of punch or a more graphic element to it, I'll draw in with the Micron pen once it's dry. Now, I'm gonna tell you about a couple um, extras. If you don't wanna use a cigar box, what I found very useful also, these are luggage organizers. I think I got these at TJ Maxx and they were in a set of three for like $4 or something ridiculously small. So when you're not traveling, they work great as a portable water color kit. They will be a little bit larger than the cigar box. They sometimes, this one doesn't, but some of them have a handle strap on them. Cosmetic pouches also uh, can be great and you can find them at very uh, low prices at TJ Maxx, Dollar Tree, places like that. Just keep your eyes peeled. 
Now, if you're uh, out and about and you have a little bit more room in whatever container you're using, I highly recommend, and you'd have, this is a great idea for a gift if somebody's looking at what they can give you uh, as a Christmas gift or Mother's Day, Father's Day, whatever. Um, this is a travel watercolor brush set, and this is from Escoda. Am I right? Yes, Escoda brushes. It's a set of six watercolor brushes. What's great about this set, okay, is they come in this little metal case this is about four inches long and it's six different sizes. They're all rounds, but they fit into the cap. Okay, so you've got a full size brush at a very small space. And the beauty of this case is that at the end, if you see that little hole, you can put a wet brush in there and not do any damage. It's not gonna mold, it's not gonna mildew. What will happen, let me get a good tip on this, what will happen is any water will evaporate out of that tip and your brushes are perfectly safe to travel. It's about four, mm, three and a half inches by five inches index card size. So that's a great item if you wanna go a little bigger on your outdoor painting kit. The other thing I do sometimes, I cut up um, watercolor sheets into small pieces that'll fit in my box. These are actually two by twos that tape off the edges nicely so you get a nice finished piece. They're great for ornaments or little um, small gift paintings. A little bit bigger. This is about a four, four by five. But I have a few of those taped and ready to go. I usually put these between my paper towels, keep them a little bit cleaner uh, as I'm traveling around, but they make great little gift paintings um, or studies for larger pieces. Then, lastly, what I carry in addition to my cigar box is, this is a Canson, uh, you can pick any brand you want. Um, I at least try to get 140 pound. This is an exception, it's a 90 pound, but what I like about it, it's watercolor paper, I like the ring spiral bound edge of it because it can sit in my lap. I can hold it very easily and paint. You can also, it's perforated, so your finished painting can be removed without having to trim a whole lot of spirals on it. But you can also, ahead of time, if you know you're going out, you can mask off a nice painting area, ended up ending up, this I believe is a five and a half by eight and a half each page. So you could end up with a nice five by seven watercolor study or finished painting that way. Um, I don't know if you have any other questions. Oh, I know what I didn't show you. The last thing when I'm watercolor painting, this one, you can tell I'm a Tangeray gin lover, um, but any one of these backpacks the box fits into, my additional watercolor uh, spiral pad fits into, my water bottle, uh, and I just usually take an eight ounce water bottle with me and throw it in there. If, you've, if, if uh, it doesn't bother you, you can take a larger spray bottle, or, um, and then uh, what I'll take is either a tin can, um, even a tuna can, tuna um, empty can rinsed out and dropped in my bag for your water cup. Uh, but it's very light, it's very portable. I can go anywhere with it and just all I have to carry in addition to this on my back is probably my chair and maybe a camera for taking reference pictures. But I hope this has been helpful for you and see you at our next meeting.